One of the many reasons 1986 was so awesome. It's the G.I. Joe Order of Battle number one from Marvel Comics published in December of that year. The official G.I. Joe handbook. Basically the G.I. Joe equivalent of the Transformers Universe miniseries of comics I previously reviewed, which is just a catalog of all the G.I. Joe figures or Transformers. Depending on which series you get, let's start off with Ace, who apparently has a gambling problem, but maybe that's how G.I. Joe is funded. I mean, they had a lot of really expensive stuff. Hey, it's Beachhead! This glorified catalog has cool pictures of all of your favorite Joes and Cobras and vehicles spread throughout four issues in this awesome miniseries, and there's also lots of great reading. Beachhead doesn't get angry, he gets even after machine gunning the f out of his enemies. And look, it's Blowtorch, one of the greatest G.I. Joe figures ever because he uses a flamethrower, which was definitely used in the Great Cobra Massacre of 1986 or 87 that I reenacted using little green army figures and lighter fluid because I wasn't actually going to ruin any of my good Cobra figures. What's up, cover girl? Secondary military specialty being hot. That's what, and uh, there was also a later battle, uh, I believe, where some Joes may have been decapitated by the Decepticons, but frankly, they had it coming. Deep Six and Dial Tone, I had both of them. This is a really fun collector's comic for those of you who grew up with the old school G.I. Joe figures, because it's just a nice trip back through memory lane. And as many of you probably know, the 1980s G.I. Joe comics were awesome. They were even better than the TV shows, primarily because the plots had a lot more depth. Frostbite! I had him. He may have met his end in the mouth of a shark to con, though. This entire four-part miniseries is a lot of fun to collect, but what really makes it special is issue two, which I'll get to in the next review, and you'll be surprised who's in there. Who was a member of the Joes that actually wasn't a member of the Joes? Although I think Gung Ho should have been a member of the village people. Look who it is, it's Leatherneck and Lady J who always distracted Flint from actually doing his job. You're being paid tax dollars to protect America, not ogle the girl Joes, Flint. Come on. Who do you think you are, rock and roll? <laughs> no. 